My name is Nikolai Fliss, and I will present you our solution of problem 9, candle in the water. Problem concept. Add some weight to a candle tap that is barely closed in the water. As the candle burns, it may continue to float. Investigate and explain this phenomenon. At the very beginning, let's think about why anything floats, floats in the liquid. Of course, it's because the balance of uh, weight and the buoyancy force of the object. Uh, the object we investigated consisted of uh, weapon uh, paraffin candle uh, and metal nail attached to, the, to its bottom. Uh, the density of the paraffin was slightly uh, lower than the density of water, while the density of metal nail was much higher. The common density was almost identical to the density of water. You could think that as the paraffin would, uh, will burn, the uh, whole frame, uh, the whole frame's uh, density uh, should rise and uh, it should sink. Well, however, that is not the case because the shape of the uh, of the candle also changes. The outer wall remains solid and therefore uh, form a well, which increases the uh, candle's displacement and therefore the buoyancy force. As a result, the candle not only remains afloat, but also rises along with loss of mass due to the flames burning. But why exactly is the wall being formed? To answer this question, we have to look at the heat transfer in the candle. As the paraffin burns, the flame, the heat is being released, uh, the uh, paraffin at the side is melted and then burns again. However, some of the heat is released to the candle surrounding and that, that is when, uh, where we can observe the difference between the candle in air and in the water. Uh, as in the Newton's law of cooling, the amount of heat flowing between uh, two states through a given area in a given time equal, equals coefficient of heat transfer of the uh, cooler substance and uh, of the cooler state and uh, uh, multiplied by the difference in temperature. Uh, as we can see, this coefficient is, uh, is uh, much greater for the water than it is for the air. Uh, therefore, the water that is in the air can, uh, can uh, give the water more heat. As a result, uh, so much heat is released that the outer walls of the candle uh, are stays, uh, remain solid and the wall can be formed. Uh, that phenomenon we cannot observe uh, in the candle which is in the air. For the further analysis, I must introduce a few assumptions that we've made. The first assumption is, oh, is that the burning rate of a candle is constant. And by burning rate, we understand uh, loss of mass in a given time. Weak and uh, another second uh, assumption is that weak uh, and the flame of the candle lay on the central axis of the candle and the well has a shape of cylinder uh, ended by hemisphere. Uh, with that assumption, we were able to develop functions of well depth in time and for candles of small diameter, uh, the uh, candle height in time. For uh, candles of larger diameter, we haven't develop the function of height because uh, we believe that it will remain constant as the outer walls of the candle will not melt at all. And the last thing we have to consider is whether the candle will stay upright, that means to remain stable. The necessary condition for that to occur is the center of mass uh, must be below the meta center as shown in the picture. Given that our assumptions are correct, in the actual candle, its uh, center of mass is, be uh, is below the meta center, so it should remain stable. Let's now proceed to the experimental part. For our research, uh, we used mainly paraffin candles of the density of 8890 kilograms per cubic meter and diameter of 20, 48, and 69 millimeters. We have uh, also attached. We have also attached. Uh, multiple toothpicks uh, to the candle, as you can see here. Uh, the aim of that was to uh, make candles stay uh, away from the uh, from the side of vessel that it was floating in. Uh, of course, we uh, each, each candle had metal nail attached to its bottom, and uh, such uh, in such way that the candle barely floated. And by barely floated, uh, we mean that the uh, effects of 
that the effects of uh, surface tension were visible. What we measured was mass of candle in time t, depth of the wall in time t, and the height of the candle in a time t. So, uh, our first observation was that for candles of small diameter have serious difficulties with floating for a long time. We believe this is because the uh, wall of the candle is too close, uh, uh, too close to the uh, flame and therefore uh, absorbs so much heat that uh, it melts even with being in the water. Uh, so our, ne our next observation was that shape of the well uh, was approximately, uh, we predicted the shape of the well approximately correct. As we can see uh, at the, in, in, as we can see in the photos, the shape uh, of the well in the actual candle are very similar to what we predicted. Uh, what we also discovered is that the wick of the candle has dangerous tendency to tip towards one edge of the candle. This is very dangerous because the flame, as depicted uh, in the photo, is no longer in the center of the candle. Due to this, one part of the well of the candle is receiving much more heat than its other part. Uh, and therefore, it may be easily melted, allowing water to enter the well and sink the candle. For candles of larger diameter, that meant that the axis of the well was not the axis of the candle. In fact, the well was moved towards one side, as shown in the photo, which disrupted the balance of candles of larger diameters. As you can see, the thicker candles are askew when floated in the water. Uh, it's because their center of masses moved, and uh, the wall, because the wall didn't form in the center, center of candle. Due to that, in the, uh, in the 48 millimeter candle, part of the wall moved so close to the flame that it had melted. Uh, Next, uh, we uh, proven that the burning rate of a candle was constant. Measurements of candles in the air and the water showed that the rate not only is constant for both states, but also is very similar. Uh, is very similar to candles both in the water and in the air. Uh, the measurements of the depth of the well, uh, which we can see on the right, show that our uh, theory was correct to the great extent. For the thickest uh, candles, you can see that depth of the well fits almost exactly the experimental point. However, we can see that uh, the difference between what we predicted and experimental points uh, tends to rise. Uh, this is because uh, the wall of the candle didn't ma melt, and we didn't expect uh, that in our assumption, in our development of the formula. However, uh, if we look at the thinner candle, we can see that the curve is fits experimental points in very different ways when we move it about uh, 300 seconds right. This is because the, uh, this 300 seconds uh, were used by a candle to establish proper flame, and the well started uh, to form only after that <coughs> five minutes. Uh, the measurements of the height of the well uh, of the candle additionally showed that our analysis was correct. Uh, here we can also see that the height uh, in the thinner candle starts to decrease only a few minutes after the initial lighting. In the candles of uh, larger diameter, we can see that the outer walls uh, remain, remain stable. Uh, so, what we did? We have explained the phenomenon in a different way. Uh, heat transfer and a hydrostatic wise. We have gained a deep understanding of the phenomena crucial to the candles floating. We have developed, developed formulas for candle height and well depth, which we proved to be correct, uh, and we uh, proved that the thinnest candles uh, tend to sink very quickly. The size of a, of a candle is a very important factor. However, when the candle is very large, uh, there is uh, not, mu uh, not that much difference between uh, burning uh, it and similar candles. The burning itself is not changed since the loss of mass in time is the same. After a well reaches its maximum radius, its depth increases linearly, and for thick candles there is no change on, in height. However, for the thin ones, the height decreases linearly. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.